Good evening, I am Mirella Nardo. I am an editor fellow of the GIPO, the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology. And today I have Dr. Kuzrock to tell us a little bit about one publication that she has done in this journal. Thank you for being here, Dr. Kuzrock. Dr. Kuzrock is an associate director in clinical research in precision oncology of the Medical College of Wisconsin. We are very happy to be here with you. My pleasure to be here. So today we would like to bring the topic of uh, this article that you published. The name is Tumor Infiltrating Lymphocyte Expression of PD-1 Predicts Response to Anti-PD-1 and pd one So I have some questions. First of all, could you just give us a brief, a brief introduction about why you decided to, to go through this research and uh, how was your, your motivation for that? Yeah, thank you for asking. So we're really excited about this recent publication in the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology. Um, we uh, know that immunotherapy has been quite transformative for many patients, uh, but still when you look at the big picture, um, it's only um, probably 15 to 20% of patients that respond to checkpoint blockade. Uh, with anti-PD-1 or anti-PDL1 agents. So uh, for, um, for me, working in the uh, field of precision oncology and precision immunotherapy, a critical question is what biomarkers can we use to better choose patients that might respond or might be resistant uh, to these uh, checkpoint blockade agents? And one of the most popular biomarkers is PDL1, which is measured by immunohistochemistry. But we know that this is a really imperfect uh, biomarker. So we decided to ask a really simple question. And uh, the vast majority of agents that are used in the clinic are anti-PD1. And so we simply wanted to ask, would the expression of PD1 predict responses to anti-PD-1. Now, we had heard rumors for several years that PD-1 was not uh, predictive, but when we actually looked in the literature, we could not find where that really, that information or that conventional wisdom uh, came from because there really wasn't a lot of literature on PD-1. Most of the literature concentrated on PDL1, yet we were giving anti-PD1 agents. Uh, so we decided uh, together with our colleagues in pathology, and this is work that was done at UCSD. Uh, Dr. Bevins is the lead author, uh, is a pathologist. And uh, to look at PD-1 expression on tumor infiltrating lymphocytes and to see if PD-1 expression correlated res with responses to checkpoint blockade. And in a nutshell, what we found was that um, even though this is a relatively small study, the correlation between PD-1 TIL expression and outcome, progression-free survival and overall survival after immunotherapy was very strong. And in fact, it was much stronger um, than the correlation between PDL1, which is the classic biomarker, uh, and outcome. Uh, so we really think that uh, more studies need to be done, but that uh, PD-1 may be the next generation important biomarker uh, for checkpoint blockade. That's so interesting. Thank you so much, Dr. Kurzrock. So how do you imagine we could try to validate this possible biomarker with uh, future studies? Yeah, so I think that this is a very important question. Well, it turns out um, that when we started to dig in the literature, we found that a few other uh, studies had looked at this question. And even though it's not widely publicized, um, these studies had also found that PD-1 was uh, important. Um, in fact, one of the studies was uh, published in JAMA Oncology. 
uh, which is, um, I think, a very respectable journal. But yet, um, the conventional wisdom, if you ask immunotherapy uh, doctors, is that PD-1 is not important. Um, so I think num number one, we have to be aware that there are pockets in the literature that have already shown what we have shown. But I think more importantly, we need a large scale study. And this can be a perspective study, or it can be a real world or re retrospective study where we look at a large number of patients who received an anti-PD-1 agent. And it can be across cancers. Our, uh, our initial study was pan cancer. And um, I think it would be relatively easy because so many thousands of patients have received uh, immunotherapy to determine if what we saw would be seen in a much larger group of patients. Um, and again, what we saw was that PD-1 predicted immunotherapy response. And this was really independent of tumor mutational burden or other factors um, that we would normally think about. It by itself seems to be a strong predictor. Great, thank you very much. And with this, with such a disruptive information, uh, could you tell us what you imagine that could happen? How could we benefit the patients in the future in case we validate this biomarker? So um, yes, I think that uh, doing PD-1 immunohistochemistry is um, easy. Um, it's fast. Uh, the antibodies are already available, including in CLIA or clinical grade laboratories. And I can tell you that we are using it in our clinic already um, to uh, look at patients have positive expression. And uh, so I think this can be both done from a research point of view, uh, but it, I think it's already um, could be brought into the clinic when thinking about patients um, to treat with immunotherapy, realizing that um, PD-1 might be an important marker. Our data actually suggests that it may be a more robust marker than PDL1. I think that's still to be proven in a larger study, but I think there's already enough data out there that suggests that it's a biomarker. The question is, where is it on the hierarchy of biomarkers? Uh, personally, from the data I've seen, I think it's going to be very high on that hierarchy, but I think this, this is already data that is um, exploitable in the clinic. Thank you so much. This was a great explanation and it's so interesting, this information. as something that, the kind of things that we don't think sometimes, we don't stop to think and see some opportunity of studying and helping the patients that we have. So I found it very interesting. Thank you so much, Dr. Kuzrock. Uh, I'll say goodbye now, but I want to thank you for your presence here today and thank you for all the knowledge you are sharing with us. Uh, my pleasure, and uh, it's a pleasure to work with the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology. Thank you very much. You can follow us, the JIPO, the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology, in social media also. Thank you very much. Take care.